G'day guys. I uh, have just been working on this gasifier for the last six months and I finally got it finished and painted up and I uh, just thought I'd do a quick video to show where it's at before initial start up although I did do a start up and according to um, some others out there on YouTube I think I went around it the wrong way and I created a lot of smoke but not much else um, <clears throat> as you can see I've got everything mounted on a pallet and I'm just going to run through it just quickly to give you an idea of um, what I've done how I've fabricated it and what I expect to achieve okay now I'll just come up this side here so this is the reactor part here as you can see she's quite tall the top was an old compressor upright dental compressor um, where it says A1 up there with a flip top lid airtight and um, below that is a three piece tube I had to fabricate uh, out of two pipes because um, well I couldn't get the diameter for the reducer I had which is just welded beneath it to go into the um, cone, the stainless steel lined cone which measures around about 10 mil thick inside you can't see that obviously but in later videos I will probably break it down and show you guys um, there is a wiper motor from a Nissan on the side just there and you can see the heat shield just there that I've also fabricated now this is a five nozzle system um, this thing here is an inspection port this gives me the convenience of taking those bolts off and reaching down and being able to change out the nozzles without you know ripping the whole gasifier apart so to speak um, the thicknesses of the walls on these is about 5 mil all the way around so your your com compressor uh, body up the top there was 5 mil the tube that I've used here with the star on it that's 5 mil also um, the barrel is 4 mil which I had lying around for a very long time and the door is 9 mil um, it's a lot of heavy stuff being used here I've uh, got the um, the air supply um, running down as close as I can to the reactor uh, body and cruising down beside the hot zone down there so that the, hair, the air somehow uh, preheats itself and so what I'll do is I'll just give a rundown of how this thing travels okay once you've basically got your, your wood going in the top there it cruises down now you'll just go here and you can see where it comes out the back there into this rather large cyclone now it's 175mm in diameter that cyclone with a screw off uh, canister underneath and it does get hot um, it cruises up here which is a 3 inch 10mm wall thick pipe to an elbow cruises across I do have a gauge in a couple of spots to give me an indication of what temperature we're getting it cruises where that arrow is there down and we've got a collection jar there now from that point there it uh, pretty much splits into two which I call the expansion tubes I'll just come pan around here and you'll see the expansion tubes that cruise down here cruise along do a loop all the way down loop 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 all the way down and they empty down here they split from into that they go into one again and from here it's got a mini cyclone you can see a mini cyclone happening here which goes up from there a collection can at the bottom of that into the first filter can which I've got steel wool in goes down has a little bit of a uh, a section just there to collect uh, 
moisture etc goes up to the next one comes down into the next one goes across to the radiator now this radiator here goes diagonally across the radiator and up the back of it and comes through and to this screen filter now that is an auto coupling for an air filter system inside this I found a metal screen with very very fine holes which worked perfectly in sizing but I did have to make a rubber gasket for it now it cruises across here to a ball valve keeps going keeps going breaks off into two into a T-junction here now this will be the line that takes us to the generator and this section here just across here where this gauge is goes across to the air pump and the reason being I've got these set up in this manner is so that I can draw uh, gas through here and when it's come up the system I can switch the air off to the pump and then the motor can start drawing from here or the generator now done a little tricky thing here which I have seen on YouTube which I'm going to try is I've capped off the top of the air pump which I can remove I've got a large brass nut on there which you can see I take that off and I've got an attachment for a smaller hose when I want to fill up a vessel or an air mattress or an air balloon with gas for cooking I just block that off I attach the hose and the pressure in there gives me about a pound pound and a half of pressure to fill up a vessel um, this is a 12 volt system a blower motor from a car a brand new one actually and I've insulated that with garden hose and that leads down to the battery which I have in a battery box in here if I rip it and take that lid off you'll see what I've done there and you can see that the wiring there uh, that's a reconditioned battery actually which I did with Epsom salts it was dead to the world for about 10 years and I revived it that's another thing you can see that sort of thing happening on YouTube where I've got most of my information which is an amazing resource now when I ran it uh, for about 10 minutes I didn't have enough fuel but I did not get any tar. I've got this little ring, I've emptied it out since, but I've got this tiny little char ring here, and it was more or less just dark water, which I don't think is a bad sign. Now, um, as I pan back around here, what I've got is a uh, switch box here. Now, I'll just undo the switch box there, and drop it down, and what we've got there, is a switch for the fan which I'll turn on now that there if I undo this here, you can see the grunt that that's got there right. that's the fan going I'll just turn that off now the other thing that I think might be of use to a lot of people on here is the grate. Now I wasn't fancying coming over here uh, once this thing is running I want to be able to walk away from it and let it go and um, what I've got is a well I must get at the moment I don't have it but an intermittent switch for the setup. I've got a fusible links here then we turn the grate motor on and I'll just quickly go around and show you just how that works. Um, what I've done before I do turn that on is I have a spring loaded shaft and usually the the arms on these only have one arm but I've added two so I can double the flick that it gives to the grate ash grate underneath and it springs back so it should shake the ash um, that develops there hopefully um, so I'm just gonna flick that on run around and show you how that's gonna work now like I said I don't have an intermittent switch on it at the moment but this is what it does you can see how it 
in and out and flicks the grate inside. Mounted to the side of the grate on chains coming down from the restriction zone. Okay. Now I'm just going to turn that off. There you go. The restriction zone in this particular unit is two and three quarter inches. I have uh, check valves here. This will allow me to adjust the airflow also with a ball valve where the pump is. If I'm drawing too much air or not enough air, I can adjust that also. I'd li I liked it to be a fully adjustable system and a professional system, something that I can, you know, I can know in my mind and say to myself uh, confidently that I can leave it outside and I know it's not going to get altered by the weather although I will probably cover it with a tarp but this gives you an idea of where I'm at at the moment and once the weather finds up I will be um, running it and hopefully getting some results just to give you a look at what I've been using as fuel at this point in time I haven't actually haven't actually cut anything I've just been getting this sort of timber here which I've split from large logs and it's around about half inch by inch now I'm going to try it cutting it in the shears that I've got there there's the shears there they're metal shears but they seem to do a damn good job of cutting this stuff and um, I'm going to try different different sizes of woods just to see what's actually um, works or is going to work better for me whether it's too small or too large um, we won't know until I try it so there it is um, there's the ash port there which is a rather large bulky unit um, cooling fins there um, when I first ran it for about 10 minutes and I was getting a lot of smoke, I did notice this temperature gauge up here rose to about, ooh, somewhere near 60 degrees. So that wasn't too bad. And the other temperature gauge here on the gas that was coming out, or smoke, goes to 120, but it didn't rise past 30 degrees. That's Celsius, mind you. So that's fairly cool for something that's coming out of a fan. Uh, out of a reactor, sorry. Um, so you all painted up. Um, just do one last sweep of it and stay tuned for the next video that I do do. And that'll um, have this puppy up and running. And hopefully it'll be outside. I did run it in here and nearly killed myself with smoke. So there you go. Thanks for watching and um, stay tuned.